Hello and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending May 9th, 2020. It was confirmed on Friday that Rumiko Takahashi's Inuyasha franchise is inspiring a new anime spin-off. The anime will tell a new original story featuring the daughters of Inuyasha and Seshomaru as they travel between feudal and modern-day Japan on a journey to regain past memories. As described in the announcement key image, quote, Time passed since the stories of Inuyasha. Now the daughters of the brothers will open the door to a new legend, end quote. Titled Yasha Hime, Princess Half Demon, the television anime is set to air sometime in the fall, so fans shouldn't have too long to wait. Many main staff members are returning from the original series to work on this new anime, including director Teruo Sato and scriptwriter Katsuyuki Sumisawa. Takahashi herself is credited with the character design, so hopefully fans uh, weren't too attached to their headcanon uh, versions of Inuyasha's kids. Let's be honest, they were really attached to their headcanon. Takahashi launched the original manga in Weekly Shonen Sunday back in 1996 and ended it in 2008. The 167 episode anime series based on the manga ran from 2000 to 2004 and also inspired a sequel anime series, four movies, and an anime short. So here's hoping that uh, turns out as well as folks are hoping. Meanwhile, another week, another fantasy light novel being adapted into an anime. Kodansha announced this week that a TV anime is on the way for Meguru Seto's light novel series, The Hidden Dungeon Only I Can Enter. They also revealed a visual for the anime, where we can see not Kirito and not Asuna, possibly in a hidden dungeon. Seven Seas licenses both the light novels and the manga in English, and describes the story as follows. Quote, Noir is the son of a minor noble with very little to his name. He does possess one rare trait, though, the magical ability to consult with a great sage, even if using this skill gives him terrible headaches. Unsure of what his future holds, he accesses the sage for advice on how to move forward and is directed to a secret dungeon filled with rare beasts and magical items. It is here that Noir will train, compiling experience and wealth until he's powerful enough to change his fate. End quote. Seto began serializing the story online in January 2017. Kanaji began publishing the print versions of the novels in August of that same year, and published the fifth volume this past March. The manga adaptation began in 2018 and published its fourth volume just this Friday. So clearly they are kind of pushing this bandwagon. Um, finally, our not all the news, but our last anime announcement of the week comes from Akita Shonen's, Shoten's Weekly Shonen Champion magazine. This year's 23rd issue of the magazine announced that an anime adaptation has been greenlit uh, based on Itaro Bonnoki's comedy manga, The Vampire Dies in No Time. The manga has been serialized in Weekly Shonen Champion since uh, 2015, and its 15th Tankobon volume came out in Japan just yesterday. Along with the announcement, the uh, manga author commented, quote, My childhood dream came true. Thank you for your support. Please keep cheering for me. Followed by two exclamation points. So he's serious. Uh, end quote. In the manga's story, a suburb of the Saitama prefecture has an old castle rumored to house an immortal vampire. Children have gone to the castle and not returned, so vampire hunter Ronald is hired to investigate. What he finds when he gets to the castle, though, is Dralk, quote, a wimpy vampire who easily dies and turns into ash, although he is immortal and the children were not caught by him, but were only playing in the castle. Ronald destroyed Drauk's castle through a little carelessness, and as a result, Drauk, who lost his home, comes to live with Ronald at his office in Shin Yokohama. Then the two pair up to try to solve various cases, end quote. So it sounds very serious. Moving on to the week's general anime-related news... It turns out that we weren't the only ones with the online con idea. Funimation announced this week that they will be holding the virtual, quote, Funimation Con 2020, end quote, anime convention on July 3rd and 4th. The event's described as, quote, a two-day stream of cosplay meetups, 
industry panels, Q&A sessions, and more, end quote. Further details have not been announced yet, so keep your eye on Funimation's social media for updates. I'm sure they will tell you all about it immediately. Uh, another independent online convention was held last weekend as well. Anime Lockdown 2020 was actually structured similarly to our own con, uh, our own OnCon, with the main programming st streaming via Twitch and additional activities like cosplay and uh, bending on Discord. The con featured 25 panels across the weekend, including Q&A sessions with voice actors uh, Kyle Hebert, Hebert and Victoria Taylor, and had more than 800 attendees at its peak. In its official wrap-up, uh, Anime Lockdown noted the, uh, quote, overwhelming positive feedback, end quote, they received about the online convention medium. Even in normal times, it can be difficult for a lot of people to attend uh, physical cons. So the rise of the online convention scene is turning out to be a great silver lining in these tough times of isolation. So here's hoping that continues. Now, if you're looking for more ways to enjoy anime with the community in between online conventions, how about a virtual anime club? Kodansha and Funimation have teamed up to begin offering a weekly home anime club where fans can join a scheduled group watch party of the featured anime and join the conversation by using the hashtag home anime club uh, on social media. The anime club will feature Funimation anime, Natch. They were based on manga licensed by Kodansha Comics, Natch, including Glefnir, Kakushigoto, and others. The first watch party took place last night, starting with the first two episodes of Glefnir. These events aren't actually direct streams of the episodes, so participants must be Funimation subscribers or acquire the episodes some other way, but everyone is encouraged to watch the same episodes at the same time and uh, participate in live discussion. Interesting. You'd think that Funimation would set up some kind of uh, synced up live streaming thing, but maybe not. Speaking of paying or not paying for Funimation, there's been a lot of ongoing discussion in this dig digital age of how to watch our favorite online, uh, favorite anime. Do we pay for streaming services? Do we buy the DVDs or Blu-rays? Well, one very dedicated anime fan came up with their own, let's just say, out-of-the-box solution, creating a botnet spanning more than 10,000 devices just for the purpose of downloading anime videos. Yeah. Cybersecurity firm Forcepoint recently published a report detailing their findings on the botnet, which has been in a heavy decline since 2019. The network named Serial, as in breakfast cereal, has been running since 2012 and reached its peak in 2015 when it amassed more than 10,000 bots. Now, it works by hijacking a, hijacking a certain brand of network-attached video recorders and storage devices and using them to connect to websites and download anime videos. Gotta say, seems a little overcomplicated just for acquiring anime videos, but as far as Force, Force Point could tell, the botnet stuck to that sole purpose throughout its entire eight-year run. The company found no evidence of the system ever trying to access stored user data, execute a DDoS attack, or any of the other malicious uses botnets often have. According to the report, uh, Serial went undetected for so long specifically because of that feature. The net only ever exploited one single vulnerability and never expanded past its main purpose. Now, though the setup was highly advanced, the security firm came to the conclusion that the creator didn't harbor any criminal intent and truly created it as a hobby project. And I guess if he was looking for a way to combine his two hobbies of hacking and extensive anime watching, he certainly found it. I wonder what the size is of his anime collection at this point. How many hard drives does he have? Now, typically, between its location, limited visiting hours, and strict anti-photo and video policies, most Studio Ghibli fans won't get the chance to see inside the Ghibli Museum. But, thanks to the worldwide quarantine, though, fans can now get a unique inside look at the museum on YouTube. The staff opened an official YouTube channel for the museum back in April, and have so far uploaded four uh, video journals featuring different areas. The first video shows off the mural in the lobby, a beautiful vine garden spanning the wall and ceiling that hides characters from many favorite Ghibli films. The second video takes fans inside the 
room where a film is born, filled with sketches and recreations of items from the movies. Last week's video shows a brief glance at the museum after dark, including its beautiful stained glass doors and lamp fixtures, and the most recent video posted on Tuesday introduces viewers to the Straw Hat Cafe. I want to be there. It's quite special to get a look inside the museum, so go check out the YouTube channel and uh, take a virtual tour of a little bit of the Ghibli Museum. Now, so far this week, we've covered plenty of entertainment options for while you are stuck at home. But what about exercise? Classic Magical Girl Creamy Mommy has got you covered. The Magical Angel opened a YouTube channel this week featuring lesson videos on simple at-home exercises that don't require any equipment. Three, this is the actual term, three creamy exercise videos have been published so far. Each one showing Mommy demonstrating different levels of exercises with an opening or ending song from the original series playing as background music. The original voice actress, Takako Ota, has returned to do the voicing for the videos, and the anime's original character designer, Akemi Takada, is overseeing the 3D modeling for the CG version of Mommy. She commented about the project, quote, Her movements in the exercise videos were very adorable, and it made me continue even though I was not good at exercising. Mommy fans, let's move your body happily following Takako-san's voice. End quote. So, this week, get in your creamy exercises. <laughs> That's it for this week. Thanks for watching.